Meet Francisco Pancho Escoba, but we'll just call him Pancho. Pancho is the proud owner of the high-end fast food restaurant Pancho's Burritos. Using his grandmother's delicious recipe, Pancho's Burritos has been serving patrons health-conscious Mexican cuisine since 2011. When Pancho's Burritos first opened, its simple menu of nutritious options caught on quickly, making it a hub for college students, cool cats, and city slickers alike. In fact, it became so popular that sometimes the line to order would go all the way to the door. Pancho was happy that everyone and their mom was trying to get at his burritos, but some customers were walking out because of the long lines. What could be causing these unacceptable wait times, Pancho wondered. With a new pizza joint right across the street, Pancho knew his restaurant had to perform at its top level to compete. So with his handy dandy notebook, Pancho decided to take a deeper look at his operations. So how does Pancho make his famous burritos? Well, with such high order quantities of roughly standard goods, he uses a repetitive production process and a burrito assembly line. Customers follow their burrito through the production process, customizing it at each of the five workstations. Currently, his line goes something like this. Station one. The customer places their order and picks their base of white or brown rice and beans. The order takes approximately 18 seconds, 9 seconds for rice, and another 9 seconds for beans, or 36 seconds total. Station 1 has a capacity of 1.67 burritos per minute. Moving on to Station 2, the customer picks their preference of chicken, steak, pork, or tofu. This process takes about 21 seconds with a capacity of 2.86 burritos per minute. At station three, things start to get spicy. Customers can pick from a variety of toppings like salsa, sour cream, cheese, lettuce, fajita veggies, and guacamole. Usually, salsa, sour cream, cheese, and lettuce can be added in 22 seconds, and fajita veggies and guacamole in 12 seconds. On average, Station 3 takes 34 seconds to complete, with a capacity of 1.76 burritos per minute. Station 4 is where the burrito gets wrapped and packaged in 28 seconds, and has a capacity of 2.14 burritos per minute. Finally, the customers pay for their order at Station 5. This usually takes 20 seconds when paying with cash, 5 seconds with card, or 10 seconds on average. Station 5 has a capacity of 6 burritos per minute. All of Pancho's employees were working hard, so what could be causing the long lines? Well, according to Pancho's value stream map, it looked like there was a big bottleneck at Station 1, but also a problematic delay at Station 3. This meant it took 36 seconds to produce one burrito, and a customer would have to wait 13 seconds at Station 2 before moving on to Station 3. In other words, 10% of the processing time was non-value added. Additionally, employees were frequently having to leave their station to restock ingredients, causing delays in the production process. During peak hours, employees were struggling to keep up with the average demand of 92 burritos per hour. Despite the design capacity being 100 burritos per hour, Pancho had an effective capacity somewhere below 92 burritos an hour. This simply wouldn't do. Pancho knew he had to fix these issues, so he set three ambitious goals for his burrito production. One, increase design capacity by 15% to help cope with peak demand. Two, reduce non-value added time by 5% to help shorten waiting times. And three, eliminate stockout delays by 100%. Immediately, Pancho had a flash of inspiration. He could duplicate his entire assembly line and have two production lines. That would increase his design capacity from 100 burritos per hour to 200, well over his goal of 15%. But wait, while he could serve more people, his non-value added time would double, and he would have twice as many stockouts. No, that wouldn't do. Pancho paced his office, trying to figure out how he could reach his goals. He drafted diagram after diagram. He knew the answer was right in front of him. Aha! Pancho knew the answer when he saw it. The secret to accomplishing his goals lied in rearranging the tasks at his workstations. By moving the fajita veggies and guac to station one, 
the rice, salsa, sour cream, and cheese and lettuce to station two, and the protein and beans to station three, Pancho came up with the following flow diagram. This new setup got rid of the bottleneck at station one and reduced the cycle time from 36 seconds to 31 seconds. This is a design capacity of 116 burritos per minute, a 16% increase. The wait time between station two and three would go down from 13 seconds to just one second, or a 9.3% reduction in non-value added time. Now, the only issue was the stockouts. Pancho had heard of these new automated self-checkout kiosks. If he purchased one of these for Station 5, he could dedicate one worker entirely to restocking ingredients. He could rotate the employees through this restocking position to give them respite while eliminating all of his stockout delays. That's it! Pancho could accomplish all three of his goals with a simple and effective solution. Take that, new pizza place across the street! This was all bien and dandy on paper, but Pancho knew things didn't always go as planned. To make sure his new production line worked as well as he hoped, Pancho decided to resample his processing times and capacity twice a week for two weeks after implementing his plan. As long as the data met his goals for three out of four of the sample periods, the new processing line would be considered a success. Pancho also considered the possibility that the self-checkout kiosks may create another bottleneck if customers were confused by how to use them. But, considering that they were becoming fairly common in department and grocery stores, Pancho believed the risk would be relatively small. And if he was wrong, it would show in his sample data so that he could quickly fix the issue. After everything was said and done, Pancho sighed, patted himself on the back, and began to close up shop. As he turned off the lights, he smiled to himself. After all this time, his operations management class really paid off. Who would have known?